Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be giving you all the information you need to set up your subtlety rogue ready for the Unchained Arena Season 2. Taking a look at race, talents, gear, soul binds, and everything else you need. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Captain. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry-level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your rogue gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on on how to deal damage, how to set up kills and win games, and exactly how to execute your specs playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. As always, the first thing you're going to need to do when creating your character is to select a race. Starting on the Alliance side, you got two options. First is the strongest of the two and the race that's strongest overall, Night Elf. Night Elf is a strong race in general for every class, but gains even more value as a rogue. The reason for this is Shadow Melt. Shadow Melt for most classes is a way to avoid hard-hitting spells or dodge crowd control. As rogue, though, you're able to utilize this as a way to gain a re-stealth, meaning you can Shadow Melt, hit stealth, and then either escape, or use one of your stealth abilities like Cheap Shot, Shadow strike or sap while even granting you access to subterfuge which as we know is huge for sub the alternative to night elf is human human allows you to drop your gladiators medallion trinket in favor for relentless giving you the best of both worlds however though with how fast the current meta game is shaping up to be in 9.1 not having access to a gladiators medallion can be very detrimental so for this fact and simply down to the power of shadow melt if you're on the alliance side we definitely recommend you go night elf moving on to the horde there is only one race worth mentioning or Orc has been the staple horde side race for some time now, and we've yet to see any balance changes to fix this and allow for more variation. But the combination of hardiness giving you a 20% reduction to all stun effects, while also still having your gladiator's medallion, makes them simply unrivaled. On top of that, Blood Fury also provides a very nice boost to your burst during Vendetta. Overall, between the two factions, while Orc is definitely ridiculously strong, Night Elf for sub is a whole different level. It's essentially giving you Vanish as a racial, which as we know, can be utilized both offensively and defensively. Next up, we're going to be breaking down the standard talent tree, giving you the default talents and any other option or situational talents you may want to select. Starting off at the top, we've got the option to choose between Weapon Master, Premonition, and Gloom Blade. Weapon Master offers some decent damage, but it's entirely RNG based, and with most of your damage being tied to Eviscerate and your Covenant ability, the small chance at duplicating either a Shadow Strike or Eviscerate is not worth the talent point. The same goes for Gloom Blade. Backstab deals essentially zero DPS, taking talents to enhance backstab is just never going to be worth it in PvP. Which leaves us with our default choice, which is Premonition. This just provides you with some additional combo points to boost your DPS while bursting, and also gives you an easy way to get slice and dice active inside of openers. So it is the best talent in every scenario. Dropping down, we got a little bit more diversity here. What we can do though is instantly scrap Shadow Focus. The reduction to energy while dancing isn't comparable to the other two options, which both offer far more in PvP scenarios. Our first viable option for this row is Night Stalker. Night Stalker provides you with some added movement speed, but more importantly, increases your damage while dancing. Then, the other option is Subterfuge. This has become a much more viable option now that Night Stalker has been nerfed to 8% in PvP. Subterfuge allows you to use your stealth abilities for 3 seconds after your stealth breaks, as well as increasing the duration of Shadow Dance. For this row, it comes down to a case-by-case -case basis. Night Stalker will provide more damage during your setups. Subterfuge will allow you much more control and the ability to peel and set up kills a lot easier. So, it's up to you. Do you need more damage, or do you need more control. If you're unsure, we recommend most of the time sticking to Night Stalker as your default. For the level 30 row, again, it's a two horse race as we can instantly disregard Vigor. The extra energy makes the gameplay feel a lot smoother, but with the rogue playstyle, you're only looking to win in short windows of burst, making the consistent energy this talent provides heavily wasted. Deeper Stratagem is your best damage talent on this row. It's a bit more of a niche pick than Marked for Death, but is a great pick for 2v2 with a healer. This gives you an extra combo point, increasing the length of your kidney shot and the damage of your eviscerate. Why this is so good in 2v2 is that it guarantees you to be able to sap off your kidney shot, giving you the ability to control the game a lot easier. The default though is marked for death. Basically the on-demand combo points far outweigh the added crowd control and burst from deeper strategium. The ability to kidney shot on demand gives you a lot of quality of life when it comes to 3v3. Also the ability to back to back eviscerate can be great at finishing targets off. So unless you're playing some healer DPS 2s, stick to marked for death for most scenarios. 
scenarios. All right, then next up, we've got the level 35 row. Again, we can instantly disregard one talent, Cheat Death. Cheat Death just isn't optimal in Arena. It's unreliable and a very long cooldown. As a result, the default is going to be elusiveness. This is what makes rogues not die instantly when they're out of cooldowns, as it now allows Faint to also reduce all damage you take by 30%. So as you can probably imagine, having a 30% damage reduction, which lasts six seconds on a relatively short cooldown, makes the talent extremely strong. The only time you'll want to deviate from this, though, is when you pick up Soothing Darkness. Soothing Darkness allows you to heal while in stealth. Where this gains use is when playing double DPS 2v2, especially Rogue Mage, as you can continuously look for resets and heal up in the safety of stealth. Moving down to the level 40 row now, it's very easy and there is one talent that you should always be playing, which is Prey on Weak. Although this is nerfed by 5% in PvP, the added damage from you and your team far outweighs the other two options. Night Terrors only buffs Shuriken Storm, which is a button only used to generate combo points, plus we've already got a slow. Shot in the Dark makes your cheap shot cost no energy, but with Slice and Dice and Master of Shadows, energy regeneration is very rarely an issue when you're looking to burst. So as you can see, we're not left with much choice, leaving Prey on the Weak a default lock-in. On our penultimate talent row, we can start off by instantly disregarding Alacrity, as you'll see later in the video. Haste is not a favorable stat, so a stacking haste buff on a spec heavily revolving around burst just isn't optimal. Dark Shadows, the first talent on this row, increases the damage of your Shadow Dance by an additional 15%. This talent is very niche. It's often used when you're looking to win in a singular dance, so anytime you're looking to do the most damage possible, this is the talent you want to be selecting. What's more favorable is picking up Enveloping Shadows. This gives you an additional charge in your Shadow Dance, while also reducing the cooldown by an additional amount of time every time you spend combo points. And as we know, without dance, you're doing nothing. Picking up this talent gives you twice the control and twice the setups, making it the clear winner in most scenarios. Then last but not least, for our level 50 row, it's very clear cut. Both Secret Technique and Shuriken Tornado offer absolutely nothing when it comes to PvP, both just being AoE PvE talents. Master of Shadows, on the other hand, gives you 25 energy every time you enter Stealth or Shadow Dance. This is nice, as it gives you additional energy during your burst, resulting in you not having to worry too much about your energy throughout the game. Which leaves our default talent tree looking like this, with Subterfuge, Deeper Strategium, Soothing Darkness, and Dark Shadow all being viable picks, but just a little more situational. Now, moving into the PvP talents. Patch 9.1 has seen a rework to several talents, with some being removed and even some new additions. We'll start by just providing you with a standard build that you can expect to take to most matchups. On screen now, you can see the three talents which we recommend for you to have as your default. Smoke Bomb, Shadowy Duel, and Thick as Thieves. But what we'll do is break down these talents, and we'll talk about any situations that you might want to swap them out and why. So starting off with Smoke Bomb, Smoke Bomb just feels essential to any rogues kit. It's great at baiting trinkets and even better at closing out games on targets without one, making it one of the best offensive picks. Then you also can't overlook the defensive perks of this talent. A well-timed defensive bomb on either yourself or a teammate can save lives. Smoke Bomb just opens up so many clutch plays that can win you the game. The same goes for Shadowy Duel. It's like a version of Smoke Bomb that enemies can't trinket. Putting you in a duel with the chosen target, this also allows you to use all your stealth abilities while active. Similar to Smoke Bomb and the fact that it's just got so many uses, you can duel a target to deny heals and finish them off. You can duel a healer to extend crowd control chains, or you can either duel defensively in order to escape and reduce damage. Then our last default talent is Thick as Thieves. This is great, as when playing Rogue well, you're constantly creating opportunities for your team to deal damage, and as this talent allows you to use Tricks of the Trade to buff your allies' damage by 15%, it makes your setups and those 2v1 or 3v1 situations a lot more potent, as often your own damage isn't enough to score a kill. So with our three default talents, let's discuss alternatives. Straight away though, we can disregard a few talents as they're never worth picking up. Those talents are Death from Above, Dagger in the Dark, Silhouette, Distracting Mirage, and Veil of Midnight. Our first optional talent is the new 9.1 edition of Dismantle. Dismantle is very simple. It's a strong disarm, which is great versus any melee. So if you need some added peels or a way to survive yourself, you can drop the added damage from Thick as Thieves in favor of Dismantle. Maneuverability is our second optional talent. This gives your sprint the ability to break roots and grants you a four second immunity to slows. This is decent for those times where you're either required to kite or struggling for uptime. It's not too often you'll take this, but swapping this in for Thick as Thieves again can potentially be an option. And lastly, the final talent you might want to consider picking up is Thief's Bargain. This has been changed slightly to now give you a lower cooldown of Vanish, Blades, and Faint 
but reduces the damage you deal while using one. This is still a decent pickup in compositions where your main objective is to set up for your team. A great example of this is the niche composition of Retribution Paladin Sub Rogue. The Ret does more than enough damage, but it's up to you to control the game and set up for him. This just gives you more vanishes, which can allow you to set up more consistently, alongside the added defense coming from your reduced cooldown on Faint. So to summarize, you ideally want to be playing with Smoke Bomb and Shadowy Duel in every game, with Thickest Thieves being the most common third talent, but Maneuverability, Dismantle, and Thief's Bargain all offer situational alternatives. Alright guys, with both your talents and PvP talents out of the way, it's time to move on to Covenants. For subtlety, it's been very up in the air over recent times what Covenant truly provides the biggest benefit. Well, with the release of 9.1, Covenant choice has been made a lot easier. The clear winner is now Kyrian. There are quite a few reasons for this, the biggest of which is the addition of Covenant Legendaries, in which the Kyrian one, Resounding Clarity, is extremely strong. On top of that, the new Soulbind passive path of the Devoted can really help with both uptime and also survivability. And furthermore, with Ferals, Beast Mastery Hunters and Assassination Rogues all being very much meta combined with the new Shackles Trinket, the File of Serenity, and its Bleed and Curse removal has only gotten stronger. The first thing you'll be tasked with when picking your Covenants is selecting one of the three Soulbinds. The best soul Soulbind for Kyrian is going to be Pelagos. This not only gives you some extremely strong Soulbinds, but also does so while giving you an optimal route for conduits, allowing you with the highlighted route hugging the right side, which you'll see on screen now, to pick up two potency conduits, one Endurance and three Finesse. The highlights of the Pelagos Soulbind has to be Combat Meditation. This gives you a huge boost in your favored stat of mastery whenever you use your Kyrian Racial, providing a ton of extra burst when you most need it. And then the new additions, first of which that we've already mentioned, Path of the Devoted gives you 20% reduced damage and an amazing reduction to slow effects every time you succumb to a crowd control effect with a very low 30 second ICD. Then Newfound Resolve. This spawns a small ghost which if you face will give you a huge boost to your primary stat as well as stamina for 15 seconds. With our soul bind selected, it's now time for conduits. The route we just covered grants us access to one endurance conduit, two potency, and three finesse. Starting off with potency conduits, we're going to want to first of all prioritize reverberation, the covenant specific conduit. This just flat out increases the damage of your curing class ability by up to a huge 90%. Then your second potency you'll want to pick planned execution, increasing your critical strike chance by up to just over 7% while you have symbols of death active, giving you a nice boost to your burst. For your one endurance conduit, the best still remains to be cloaked in shadows despite the nerfs. This gives you a shield every time you stealth, great for providing you with easier re-stealth potential. And then to finish off the tree, we've got three finesse conduit slots to fill. The strongest of which is rushed setup. This greatly aids with your energy regeneration, heavily reducing the energy cost of kidney, cheap shot, and sap, making energy issues a thing of the past. For your second finesse conduit, the best option is going to be quick decisions. This reduces the cooldown of your shadow step by a static 10%, as well as also increasing the range. This is great at giving you some extra mobility and range to reach targets to then either set up kills or crowd control. Then to finish off the tree, the final finesse conduit is prepared for all. This is great at providing you with some extra defense as every kick or dodge will then reduce the cooldowns of Cloak of Shadows and Evasion, your two biggest defensives. Next, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about how to correctly gear your sub rogue in patch 9.1. 9.1 sees the release of gear, which scales up to 259 at duelist level, meaning our best gear will all be obtainable from PvP, bar one or two items for you min-maxers, which we'll get into later. So for your stat priority, it remains the same. It's versatility and mastery, followed then by critical strike, with haste being your least favored stat, which means you'll want to aim to buy all pieces that have both versatility and mastery. Then as for trinket choices, we still want to be sticking with double PvP ones purely for the additional versatility two set. If you're any race bar human, you'll want a gladiator's medallion. Humans will want relentless. Then for your second trinket, the new unchained gladiator shackles act acts as a stronger version of the old Maledict, applying a heavy healing absorb while doing some very high damage, insane for setting up kills. While you can do very well with a full set of PvP gear, something we're not too sure on is the impact of domination sockets inside of PvP. It's confirmed they are nerfed by 50% and that the socket bonus won't work, but with domination gear from the final two bosses being 246 eye level on heroic and 259 on mythic, the latter is equal to the highest PvP gear obtainable, and if pieces have versatility on them, they become become very desirable, no matter the strength of domination sockets, as that way you're essentially getting a socket with no drawback. So if you're able to access these items, eventually they will become best in slot as long as domination sockets remain active in PvP. There 
are also domination items coming from the earlier bosses, but as these are an eye level downgrade, the strength of these items will purely be based on how good domination shards end up being. But with shards like the Shard of Kier being in the game and a throwback to resounding protection, they could end up having a pretty big impact, but we'll keep you updated on this throughout the season. Another item we're unsure on the strength of is the Edge of Night Dagger from Sylvanas. As this proc is active inside of PvP, it could end up potentially being stronger than max eye level weapons from PvP despite the stat loss. One integral part of the gearing process is your legendary choice. We touched on this earlier, but for Sub Rogue, the whole reason Kyrian is so strong revolves around the resounding clarity legendary. This comes at the perfect time, considering the previous go-to legendary Mark of the Master Assassin was recently heavily nerfed. As for what slot you should be crafting this on, we recommend shoulders combined with mastery and versatility missives. Alright then, with your character now fully set up, our last section of this guide is going to be macros. First and foremost, focus or arena 123 macros are vital for interacting with a specific player on the enemy team, no matter who you're targeting. You'll need these for a large amount of your abilities as a rogue if you want to play at the optimal level. A great way to do this if you go the focus route with modifiers, the macro on screen now will cause your kidney bind if you hold shift to instead do it on your focus target. But however you opt to do these macros, be it focus or arena 123 based, is all personal preference. Ideally though, you'll want one for kidney shot, cheap shot, sap, blind, kick, dismantle, shadow step, and shift. Aside from general focus or arena 123 macros, there are not too many rogue specific macros. The exceptions being first of all spammable sap macro. The one on screen now will allow you to spam sap in openers and instantly sap anyone you see in stealth. Perfect for any opener against a stealth class. Then a spammable stealth bind. This just will remove the chance that you accidentally hit stealth twice and subsequently leave it when attempting to go for a re-stealth. It's also got a cancel or a shadow dance attached. As you're unable to enter stealth while dance is active, this is useful in niche situations. And last Lastly, is a way to easily give your teammate tricks of the trade, which can be done either by party macros or just by inserting the name of the player. So in this example, unless you're playing with Zot, use the name of your teammate. Alright guys, that about does it for this one. Hope this helped, and as always, good luck in Season 2. Just as a final reminder, if you enjoyed this guide, make sure to head on over to Skillcap if you're interested in continuing your learning by checking out our world-class rogue courses. For now though, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.